nowadays, um, I think uh, all over the world, higher education, we are more and more aware developing not only technical which are the basis for the programs, uh, vocational programs and more scientific programs in uh, higher education, but also what we call transversal skills, meaning uh, a kind of competencies that are important to everyone uh, independently of the, the professional area where this person is. So soft skills are transversal skills and they are in combination with technical skills what makes a good professional and someone expertise and the ability to adapt the challenges of the profession, of the workplace and uh, the fact that uh, work and labor happen in a planet and with other human beings. So soft skills are a lot about how to cooperate with other people, how to lead groups, how to understand the ethical aspects of our behavior, uh, either in, in uh, human relationships or more uh, professional relations. Um, how to create new devices, new processes, how to innovate and to solve, uh, how to um, critically understand the effects of our behavior, our activities, uh, the, the products that the enterprises create, what we consume, what we eat. So everything is subject to some kind of uh, inquiry and understanding the, uh, the implications, ethical and more implications of our behavior. So the best professionals are those who have this sense of the relevance of his own behavior on other people and the world. Uh, so soft skills are nowadays um, uh, recognized as a vital factor for uh, the success in environment and what kind of environment do we have today? It's um, characterized by peace. That's one of the characteristics of modern world. Everything happens really fast and uh, changes can happen in one day, more changes than happened before in a few years. So this is what we have today, uh, speed. And this speed is um, maybe not very compatible with the way ho how we use to behave and to understand the world. Another characteristic is connectedness. Due to technologies and globalization, we are connected to everyone. So what happens one side of the world will have effects in the other side of the world. Our behavior is not without consequences. And due to this connection, we can learn from each other and faster, uh, but also the dangerous effects of our behaviors can be uh, faster and more, and more dangerous. Uh, and these are two of the most, or three of the most nowadays. So technologies are there too with the emergence of new machines, new software, and new ways to produce and uh, uh, activity world of. So I have here a few numbers which help understand the uh, modern trends. And uh, we know now that in three years time from now, the time spent by humans and machines on current tasks and at work will be equal. So we, this is huge change from first, second and third industrial revolution. We are now in the fourth revolution, industrial revolution, meaning digitalization of uh, the world. Uh, and the machines are taking the place of humans in ma many professional areas. That is a huge impact in the way how we understand work nowadays. 
The other difference or the other number is 85 million jobs will be replaced by a change in the of labor between humans and machines. So the, the um, ecology of professions and the tasks that professionals uh, are uh, involved in are about to change and be replaced by different activities, different professions, and different um, uh, responsibilities in the world, both by people and by machines. Third number, 97 million new jobs more adapted to the new division of labor between human machines and algorithms. So this means that we don't have to be prepared for a job very stable for all the, our lives, but we have to be able to adapt. And adaptation is a matter of survival, both in life and in the workplace. So what we have to prepare our students to, not only to understand the special technical aspects of the job, but also to understand how to deal with uncertainty and with problems that this uh, student may uh, never have faced before in his life. And maybe after five years of experience, when he's starting to become ex an expert on his task, the task uh, will be different. So it, it is really important to be able to adapt. And for that, we need a certain kind of tools, which are both intellectual tools and personality tools and character. So, soft skills are there in the core of these uh, capability to adapt in the near future. In these, uh, this program, um, four categories of soft skills have been chosen to be dealt with. One of them, problem solving. Uh, and problem sol solving implies critical and innovative thinking and creativity. So the ability to understand problems, not only to solve problems, but to understand where is a problem and to be able to understand what makes this problem be problematic, understand what kind of strategies might be put into place to solve the problem, be able to put it into practice, and then assess, evaluate the result of action. All these has a lot to do with intellectual abilities like creativity, thinking out of the box, uh, putting in, uh, being flexible, um, being able to deal with the uncertainty and the risk and um, test and accept some errors. Because, um, solving problems implies uh, essays and possibly many of these essays will, will end in failure. So this is a huge, hugely important capability nowadays, problem solving. The next topic is ethical understanding, which is really transversal, and it has to do with the ability to understand the moral and ethical side of our actions in the prof professional domain. And in these uh, food industry uh, aspects nowadays, there are a lot of ethical aspects that need to be inquired, scrutinized, discussed, and thought of before we take action. Like today, we listen to the fact that what we eat has implications in, the, um, in climate change and we can eat more sustainably or less sustainably. And if we are aware of the impact of our eating behavior on the planet, uh, maybe we can change our behavior. All that has to do with the ethical understanding of our behavior both in workplace and in uh, daily life. The next uh, set of um, uh, skills are intrapersonal and interpersonal skills. Intrapersonal deals with the way how you monitorize your 
uh, being, your existence, and how you understand yourself. Like the ability to control your behavior, uh, the confidence in yourself, the awareness of who, who you are and uh, how you are in relation to other people and the environment. So interpersonal has to do with the philosophy of yourself, the philosophy of existence, and how you change your behavior in order to make yourself become more close to your ideal of a person or professional. Like if you have some models of behavior in your, uh, who guide you in your uh, workplace, you would like to become more closely um, uh, similar to this ideal model of behavior and professional. And if you have self-awareness, you can adjust the way how you are to this ideal model and become closer to it. So it has a lot to do with the self-reflection and understanding your behavior, your thinking, your feelings, and become not only aware of the environment, of, but also yourself in this environment. Now, interpersonal communication skills have to do with your ability to work together with other people and living together with other people. And understand that in human relations there is a... Um, I'm sorry, can you listen to me? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, because from time to time I get one message on my screen saying that people are attending, waiting for me, and I don't understand what it means. But if you listen to me, great. So about interpersonal uh, skills, it has to do with the um, way how we manage our relationships with other people in daily life and in the work workplace. And it is so important for topics like productivity, quality of our work, uh, the results we can achieve, and the ability to contribute positively to the, the mission and the goals of the enterprise. So it is a, a kind of um, complex skills that can be uh, worked on too and uh, developed and learned. And among these interpersonal skills, the aspects of communication, both verbal and nonverbal, are really essential because uh, if we have a clear and um, uh, interesting way of communication with others, less conflicts, less misunderstandings, and less problems in a team will, uh, will happen. So it's really important to prepare students to be, um, uh, to be able to communicate in a, in a interesting and positive way with their mates, and their um, bosses and uh, their uh, groups if they are leading a group. And that is the next uh, group of uh, skills, which is leadership and team building. Of course, this uh, has been prepared only for level six and seven, so for full um, um, engineer. And in this, uh, uh, in this level, we uh, understand that uh, many of the students who are in this, uh, in this uh, uh, level of studies might be uh, leading groups sometime in their life. Maybe they will be the, the top uh, leader in, in a, an enterprise, and they will have a group of people who somehow depend on the way how he organizes the learning, the working environment, how he makes people connect with each other, how he makes people adhere to the idea and the, the, the work, the business, um, how they motivate people for work and for quality in the work, and how they solve uh, problems and conflicts when they happen, and they will happen, of course. So leadership and team building is the next um, uh, kind of skills that we 
uh, work done in, the, in these programs. Um, there is a number of uh, ECTS, which is for, for these uh, topics, a number of contact hours and assessment, around 44. And all together, this means that we should involve our students in about 100 hours in order to, for them to understand and to practice the basis of these soft skills that are included in the. So here are a few examples of uh, what we mean by, for instance, now problem solving. And the teaching topics will be strategies used for wise decision making and effective problem solving. This will be um, learned from activities. So the, all the approaches in these uh, soft skills modules are hands-on approach, meaning that it's not someone telling the student about this topic like I'm doing now. This is not the good uh, idea if we really want to develop soft skills in the person. So that is experiential, meaning that Hands-on approach is the best way to deal with this, um, this content. So it's not an intellectual content. It's something that you have to experience. You have to be challenged to put it into uh, place, to use it, and then to reflect on the results, how you felt, what you understood, how you want to progress developing this. Like decision-making, how can you be able to uh, do some wise decisions in the workplace if you never had the chance to decide about something, if you only obey or if you only follow orders, it's not possible. So you have to take decisions to see the results of these decisions, evaluate it yourself, maybe in peers, maybe in team, maybe with the guidance of the facilitator, the the trainer, the teacher, but you have to have the experience. So this is one of the teaching topics. Learning from failure is another one. You need to be you need to be uh, in situations where you may fail, but failure not being risky, not um, being a failure of who you are, but a failure of the action. And when you understand that, maybe you can. So, uh, you can avoid this kind of uh, strategy next time and instead use a different action, a, a different decision, a different strategy to solve the problem. Then the other uh, way to, to move, to progress in your ability to problem solving is to put innovative sol solutions uh, into action, to think out of the box, to think of uh, uh, disparate uh, ways to solve a problem and to, uh, to use it. Um, cooperative problem solving is really important. Of course, some people are faster in solving problems than others. People who are more flexible in intellectual aspects, who are more um, uh, in, in the mood to take risks, are more creative. And uh, in, in the workplace, we will understand that some of our mates are more conservative and others are more creative, more doing different things differently. Um, but many of the problems we face in, in the workplace nowadays cannot be solved by one person. And we know now that innovation uh, very often comes from the cooperative work, work group in teams when people uh, are uh, confident uh, if that their ideas, if, even if they don't seem very, very interesting, will be accepted instead of judged. In such kind of groups, innovation happens and the best ideas come very often from innovative communities. So it's important that you understand how you can uh, discuss new ideas and put them into place with your colleagues and with your 
superior than so. And then reflection. And then, of course, assessment. That is so important that you have some time to reflect and to understand how your uh, strategies of problem solving um, were impacting a positive solution for the problem. So ethical, I'm not going to, to discuss uh, all these. That was just an example. But uh, for all the module, there are activities. There, they are hands-on approach. They will um, imply that students will have some cooperative work. They have some times of um, uh, reflection. And they will have the chance to experiment with colleagues some activities that are somehow challenging and uh, make you understand better the importance of developing this kind of transversal competencies. Here's the syllabus in uh, learning outcomes for intrapersonal and interpersonal skills. Now, finally, for leadership and building. And one question is how to teach soft skills. Uh, there are some methods that work better than others. As I already told you, lecturing is not the best way because no, nobody can become a good leader if he has not had the chance to lead somehow in some circumstances, more formal, more informal, to lead groups and to understand the impact of the voice, the strategy of command, the, the structure he organized for the group uh, to work, uh, the way how he approaches approach, uh, his team. You, you need to, to have the experience. So how to teach? What kind of uh, teaching strategies will work better? I'm going to tell you that somehow are in uh, the, the shows and methods for these uh, modules. And one of them is problem-based learning, PBL. PBL is uh, based in uh, the fact that we face problems uh, all the time in our lives. These problems can, can be more or less complex. Um, and in uh, traditional teaching, maybe the teacher would say, this is a problem. This is the way how to solve the problem. And he could lecture about the virtues of this kind of solution. And he could tell us the story of all this problem. And then the solution that is put into place is this one. And this is what you have to do when you face such a problem. But problem-based learning is the opposite uh, method. In problem-based learning, students will acquire essential skills while they solve problems. And these problems will be relevant, so real world problems, and they will be complex. Of course, not the maximum level of complexity, but le the level of complexity that is uh, adjusted to the level of skill that the student has in that moment. So, the student will learn to identify a problem. Then he will approach the problem with some questions. Then he will do some research in order to understand better the different facets of the problem. Then he will try to put into place some solution. He will understand how the solution exists and he will um, evaluate the results. PBL is mostly used in team work, so it's not about students working alone by themselves, but working in, in groups, in teams, and discussing the problems with colleagues and with the teacher, and doing some work on the problem in this uh, cooperative environment, learning environment. And the rationale for uh, PBL is that uh, it, it can be used for heuristic tasks. So um, later in the real um, uh, professional work, the student will 
will encounter similar problems and uh, uh, the strategies that he learned that can be used in similar problems, will he will be able to adapt it or to use it uh, in these real life problems because he had the chance to, to experiment already with that. So the basis for problem-based learning is a problem. The other methodology is project-based learning. It's very simili similar to the first one, but in the first one, in PBL, what students had to do was to solve a problem. And in project-based learning, what students have to do is to develop a task, maybe to create a product, maybe to solve a uh, um, uh, a situation that doesn't work because of a procedure and he will find different ways to to proceed in order to, to achieve some result. So now it, this is a task based activity and students together will do something that will solve problem, not only to solve it in like a heuristic but they will do something like they create an artifact, they create um, a model, something like that. Both in PBL or in project-based learning, this methodology has a lot to do with the content. So what students, the problems and the tasks that students have to deal with are content related. So they have to do, if he's learning about uh, food technology, these problems and tasks will have to do with the food industry. Some other teaching methods that also uh, evidence tells us work well uh, to develop soft skills are case studies. So the student can understand uh, problems and tasks and difficulties in the food industry from examples. These examples will be first presented. It can be in a video or uh, something that the teacher is telling to the students or the students can find case studies and then discuss these cases, try to understand what was the problem, why the solutions didn't, didn't work or they worked, um, who were it, who were the people involved? Uh, what was the 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 way how the 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 problem arrived, the causes for it, and the effects of uh, and the impact of the um, the activities that were developed there? So case studies are good because uh, they suppress the the fact that very often we cannot learn in the workplace. And somehow through case studies and also through modeling, meaning students seeing how the experts do, how they solve problems, how they think, uh, why they do that uh, through explanation. So modeling is also a good uh, example. Questioning and discussion. So through the conversation with other people, maybe our colleagues, our peers, or maybe our teachers, or maybe the experts, uh, the invited experts for a, a talk, through questioning and discussion of important ideas in, the, in this program, you will learn because your brain will be approaching the topic and understanding from, from different perspectives um, uh, about the complexity of the phenomenon. Research and team-based learning and uh, has a lot to do with questioning and to understand um, a procedure for uh, learning about a topic, which is the procedure that scientists use for science and, and research. So you start by understanding the problem, then you put some, um, you create some hypothesis and then you are going to uh, apply this and then you um, you see what is the result and then you take conclusions. So the research method can be used for learning too. Finally, design thinking, which is um, a new approach involving many different strategies like brainstorming, 
visualizing, daydreaming, storytelling, and so many others. And through this, I'm thinking you prepare your brain to think in a certain way that is more innovative and creative and able to make you understand what is into place and how to deal with the different aspects of the problem in a more complex way, let's say. Yeah, so this was what I had to present uh, now as a summary of what soft skills module deals with. Thank you so much for your attention.